trees than one historic neighborhood. We're talking about Pontchartrain Park. It was built in 1955 and it was the first planned suburban development for a black community in the United States. In fact, the neighborhood was actually just added to the National Register of Historic Places last year. So now sustaining our urban landscape, it's a group better known as Seoul. Well, they want to make a huge environmental impact and you can help them out. So joining us live this afternoon on Zoom is Susanna Burley, Seoul's founder and executive director, and Eugene Green, the board of director. Thank you both so much for being here. Eugene, I want to go ahead and start with you. Tell us why you all are planting trees. Well, the trees certainly enhance the appearance of communities. They're beautiful. Some of our communities that have the most trees are very beautiful in our city of New Orleans, but there's a real function, um, functionality relative to trees. Um, they absorb water and uh, reduce the flooding caused by storm water runoff. They can also help to cool, cool communities by providing shade canopies and also make it easier for people to participate in recreation in their communities, walking and socializing with each other. So we view, we view this as a very, very positive contribution to that community, but also to our environment. And we're looking forward to the Punta Train Park community, a historic community, serving as, a, as an example to the rest of the nation, actually, as to the importance of reforesting those areas that have been deforested. And Mr. Eugene, why in Pontchartrain Park? Why is that important? Pontchartrain Park is a historic community, a community in which I grew up, um, but it's very symbolic of what the problems were, especially in the past relative to environmental concerns. To build a community that was gonna house um, the rising African-American middle class, all of the trees were cut out, Nobody cared about those sort of things back then. It was just, we have a place to put them, put them back here. And they tore down a, they got rid of a tremendous cypress, Tupelo um, swamp, and, um, well, not swamp, but water, waterways. And um, it was very symbolic of the fact that no one cared. And unfortunately, right now, um, 60 years later, 65 years later, there are some streets that have no trees. We're about to change that, and I think that over these next decades, you'll see a tremendous difference. But it's the historic nature of Punta Train Park, the fact that everyone in our metropolitan area should be proud of that community, what it stood for then, and what it still stands for now was a great single-family community with a university, with recreation, and the like. Ms. Susanna, let's talk about the trees' benefits. How is this going to help the community? Well, it's uh, the way that we're planting, which is trying to get a tree in front of every house. Um, that's that's we're planting as a system so that the trees can act as a green infrastructure. So when you have a community of trees, then you can lower air temperatures by up to eight degrees, which we know is an incredible amount, especially if the power is out like it was during Ida. Uh, they drink up stormwater. Uh, the bald cypress, our state tree, for example, can drink 880 gallons of stormwater per day when it's raining. So one tree like that isn't going to change how a neighborhood responds to a heat wave or responds to a rain event. But when you plant a whole neighborhood with water loving trees, um, and you nurture them to maturity, which we do by watering them for the first year, then you can really change the environment. The, the landscape of a community. And I got to hand it to Eugene. This was his idea. He came to us and he said, I grew up in this neighborhood. I love it. And I want to see a tree in front of every house. And so you, how Susanna. can people come out and help tomorrow morning? What do they need and where can they find out more? Because this is the first of several tree planting events that are going to go on in that historic community. <laughs> Yes, so we're going to plant 700 trees. Unless we get more funding, then we'll plant more trees. So, um, but yes, so we're the volunteers are meeting tomorrow morning at um, at the Bethany United Methodist Church. The lot are right across the street from that church. Um, Eugene, you can give us the address. The address of the church is 4533 Mendez Street in the Punta Train Park subdivision, and this is the former site of. Cog Hill Elementary School. We'll be meeting there. We'll be staging from there. And everyone is certainly welcome to come out. Yes, come out at 915. You can also sign up. We're um, we're about to close the online sign up. But if you sign up right now, it's soulnola.org slash volunteer dash sign dash up. 
solnola.org slash volunteer dash sign dot dash up. Um, but you can also just come out at meet us at 915 in the morning and um, we'll have pizza afterwards and we're going to have just a great time together tomorrow. And the weather is going to be fabulous for it, Miss Susanna and Mr. We're going to have all weather. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. We, that. <laughs> we planned it this way. I, yes. I, I know y'all did. Thank you both so much. We're going to put this on our website, WDSU.com, so you at home can learn more about Seoul and other ways you can help. Thank you both so much for uh, joining us today for the News at Noon. We certainly appreciate it.